morning folks and welcome back to the channel and we're coming at you this morning from Blue Fix Energy Solutions in Hereford and we're here to sort out the electrics on this Nissan MV200 tiny teeny tiny little camper van and what we're going to do today is change what's in there and make it far more off grid so we can take this little thing properly on the road. <laughs> Now, I know what you're all thinking. Lou, you did the electrics on your own van. Why are you not doing the electrics for your own mother's van? Now, there's a couple of reasons. One of the reasons is electrics is a tricky thing. Ah, fuck! And it's the thing we get asked about probably the most when it comes to van builds in our DMs and in the comments section of videos. Now, I try my best to help people out, but a lot of people want to know of a reputable company where they can bring their van and get the electrics modified, fixed, updated, changed, or complete installs altogether. And that's what they do here at Bluefix. They specialize in camper van electrical systems, installs, that kind of thing. The second reason I'm not doing it is because although I'm competent at putting a new system in, this van has an existing system, and these guys know a lot more than me about integrating uh, new components into an existing system. So I'll show you what this van has got, and then we'll go through what we're gonna be adding. Take my shoes off. My mum won't be impressed if we trapes mud in there. Oh, it's so full. I'm gonna whack the pop top up so that I can actually move around. So here we go then, this is the main heart of the electrical system in this van and it's called the Sergeant System and if you've got a factory built camper van or an older camper van you may have seen this before. It does have mains charging in and this van has got some sort of split charge type relay but it's not ideal. So this will run the fridge um, and the water pump and whatnot but for example these plugs only work on 240 volt as do the USB so we need to add some of them in. Now you could just add those in and be done with it but We've only got 110 amp hour lead acid battery in here, no solar on the roof, um, so it's not ideal. It's not gonna last, it's not gonna run that fridge for very long on a 110 amp hour lead acid battery. So we're gonna beef everything up. We're gonna add a B to B, we're gonna add solar, MPPT charge controller, you need that to work the solar. And we're gonna put in a much better battery than what's already in here that I'm very, very excited about so that my mother can come with us to more off-grid places and be there for days on end without having to worry about if she's got enough power to do all the little bits and pieces she needs. Right then, whilst the guys and girls are making a start on the van, I thought I'd nick this very nice little space they've got to tell you a few of the components that are going to be going in and also appreciate this ball of blue here, which is very impressive. Oh baby. Nice. While we're on the subject of blue, the first component that's going to be going in is a Victron MPPT charge controller. And basically, apologies for the background noise, but that's going to happen. What this does is it sits between the solar and the battery, and then this basically converts the sun power into energy that can go into the battery. That's in layman terms. I know it's not that massively technically explaining it, but that's what it does. We've then got this Orion B2B charger. Now what this does is it's like what used to be a split charge, so it's a smart one. So it takes air power from the engine battery, from the alternator in the engine battery, and then charges up your leisure batteries at the back of the van or wherever you've got them. Again, that's layman terms, but basically this means you can charge your vehicle up whilst you're driving along, which in the winter we found is essential. Now, why Victron, I hear you ask? The answer is simple. We've had Victron in our van for over three years now and it has never, and I mean never, let us down. So yes, it's a bit more expensive, but you get what you pay for. Not only that, we've got loads of friends with vans, motorhomes that have had Victron components installed and I personally don't know anybody that's had a Victron component let them down. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I'm just saying we know from experience it's good quality kit. Now that is really important for me with my mother's van because if she goes off on the road on her own, she does a little jolly around the UK or even worse, she goes abroad and something happens, you, you all saw what happened with the walkie talkies. Emily to Joni, Emily to Joni. You have to press the button, Joan. Press the button, Joan. Press the button, press the button. <laughs> no. I don't want to find myself trying to explain to my mother via video chat how to fix a component in their electrical install. It will be a nightmare and pretty much impossible. So I want to make sure that she's got good kit that's going to last that's gonna do the job so she can put it in or it'll go in and then she never has to think about it again. And I know that we get that with Victron, so I'm a big fan of Victron and I think if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We've also got some nice robust components, so proper isolation switches, some proper bus bars and whatnot, just to beef it all up so that it is safe on the road because some of the wiring that's in there is very thin wire, chalk blocks connect it together, it's not ideal. So we're gonna put some chunky components in and then the heart of the system, Now, I wouldn't go any other way now. Now that I've had EcoTree Lithiums, 
in our existing van, these things are amazing. Now, lithium batteries, as opposed to AGMs, they can only go down to 50%. A lithium battery, you can take 80% out of it. So with this 110 amp hour battery, we're gonna get far more usable amp hours than what we get out of the 110 amp hour lead acid that's in there already. So this is ideal. We've got two of these in our van. You would have seen them go in a few years ago. And again, they've never, ever, ever missed a beat. And we've hammered them. We've taken them all over to minus 15 in Europe, plus 30 when we was in Sweden. They've been taken down, brought back up, taken down, brought back up. On top of that, they're just far more efficient. So we found that when the sun is there, even if it's minimal, these charge up a lot quicker and far more efficiently than our old AGMs done. And the biggest plus, especially in a van of this size, if we wanted to go down the conventional route of lead acid or AGM, and get more amp hours, that, amp hours that way, we'd have to put in an extra battery. Now, they're heavy and they're big, so that's an awful lot of space we're gonna lose. These are far more lightweight, so by taking that one battery out, we're gonna save some weight, but it means we've only gotta put one back in, not two, it means we've got far more space. And then this one, what I really like about this one, it's heated, which you don't, most people don't need, to be honest, but it's got built-in Bluetooth, so there's an app you can go on, you can see how much you've used, what voltage is coming in, what voltage is going out, and you just know what you're doing so you can monitor your batteries properly to make sure you don't take them down and run them completely depleted. So yeah, EcoTree, absolutely love these things. It's been a game changer for us in our van, so they're definitely going in my mum's van. <laughs> One more thing I quickly wanted to add because I know some of you are going to be interested. Now obviously we've had companies offer us to send us a lot of the components for this install for free. I've never used those companies before so my mum is paying. Uh, yes the boys are giving us a bit of a discount but my mum is paying for the components. So that's how much I trust Victron. Like I say I just want her to have good solid components. So don't ask me about other brands because to be honest I don't really know. I just know what works. I know what we're happy with so that's why we're going for that as complete transparency. Technical row, how's it going, Luke? Yes, we're getting there, just choosing the layout. Um, Liz is fixing everything to this board that she's made. Look how neat that's going to look. It'll look pretty good. It's going to be better than what I've got in mind, isn't it? <laughs> well, <laughs> you, know, saying? you know where to come when you want yours done again. I feel like a bit of a spare part, so I thought the least I could do is make them tea. Very important. Here we go then, this exciting bit. It's yeah. pretty bald. <laughs> This is the exciting bit, the solar panel is going on. I think Luke and I both agree that a rigid panel is normally better, but for what my mum wants, she wants to stay stealthy and not worry too much about the wind noise and that. She's gone for a flexi one, but yeah, I'd go rigid. But it's exciting to have solar on the van finally. Does it fit? It fits. Wondering when the well went dry. Asking where it all went. Take a step back and look at the time. Look at that, that is what you call one knee install. Very happy with that. And Luke's gonna give you a quick rundown of what's in there and what it does. Sure, there is a 110 amp hour lithium battery there. Plenty of juice for the needs required. We've got two ways of charging it, which is a DC to DC charger that charges when the engine's on. And 
this is an MPPT, so that takes power from the sun, boosts it up, charges your leisure battery. So yeah, it should be plenty of power for what your, your mum needs. And some nice robust uh, bus bars and cables in there, much better than what was originally in. So yeah, super happy with that. It looks bang tidy. It is a shame we're gonna put a panel over it to tuck it all away, because it does look good, but maybe I'll convince my mum to have a nice little Perspex panel in front so we can show off these guys' hard work. <laughs> Probably explain these two loose cables, they're going to be through a switch, aren't they? Yes, we're, so we're going to have a big, uh, what is it? A isolator switch. An isolator switch so that we can isolate the entire, this thing, this thing. So we can isolate the entire system if, if there is a problem, which I very much doubt, but at least we can just go push and it's off. So we're very safe for a 69 year old woman who can't work all talky. Press the button, press the button. <laughs> you have to wait for me to stop talking and then you can talk. After the beep, ready? <laughs> Good morning, so it's a whole new day here. Second day of the install, they're nearly done. It was just because obviously the solar needed to stick overnight. So it's a very bright day actually. Uh, Max and Luke are just connecting up the solar now. Uh, I realize I haven't told you what size panel we've gone for. So it's 175 watts, which I think is gonna be enough, but obviously we'll always keep you updated. So you're gonna fit that up, test it, and then I think we're good to go. <laughs> Right then folks, it has been about 10 days since the install, so I thought I'd give you a bit of an update on how it's doing. So first, I thought I'd go over what it's actually running, so what that system has got to keep going in this van. So it's not too much, so we've got a 12 volt compressor fridge in here. Now if you want to do any kind of off-grid camping and you're going to be having a leisure system, I would recommend if you can go to a compressor fridge, do it. It's far more efficient than a freeway fridge on 12 volt and it means you're not relying on gas to run your fridge. So we've got the 12 volt compressor fridge. The Vitra Frigo one is performing really well actually. It's a 35 litre and it's performing slightly better than my 50 litre Dometic. So really impressed with that. Um, what else have we got? We have now, you might have noticed there's a little addition. There's a couple of additions here, but this one is for a diesel heater. Now I will show you that in an upcoming video because we go and get that installed as we come into our journey in Wales. So you will see that, but not in this video. The diesel heater and the fridge are the two biggest users of power in here. And between them, overnight, it's been cold and overnight the diesel heater has been on and off. The fridge is obviously running all of the time. We've got some USB, some mum's charging her phone and her tablet. And apart from that, she's not using too much else. There's no silly coffee machine, uh, blender, uh, you know, the cooking thing. What's that? Cooking thing's not really my area of expertise. What's those electric cooking things called? Oh, come on, Louise, think. Think, you know this, you know this. What are they? Induction hob. There's no induction hob, so the cooking is on gas. So it's just the fridge. I f***ed this up and I've waffled too much. Right, we're running a fridge, a diesel heater, charging a phone, a tablet, and a few little tiny items. Oh, and the 12 volt lights, obviously, and the water pump, that's it. And out of the battery overnight, we're probably not even losing 10%. I don't think I've seen this van yet. I've been checking and it's not gone below 90%. So the system itself, the battery is performing really, 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 really well. So very, very happy with how it's going. And I think my mum's gonna be able to go off grid uh, pretty much 99% of the time. We are driving a little bit most days and there has been a surprising amount of sun actually for Wales. So it's not been difficult conditions, but the fact that we're only using 10% a day out of the battery, even if we didn't drive and had no sun for days on end, I think you could easily go three or four days, possibly five in here without having to worry about the power. Okay, let's talk about that battery, that lithium battery. Now, a lot of you know we've got lithium batteries, exactly the same lithium batteries in ours. We've just got two of them, whereas my mum's only got one. Uh, a lot of you have asked for an update over time, and I've, I've mentioned it in videos, the lithium batteries are performing exceptionally well in all kinds of conditions. So my mum's got the same in here, she's just got half the capacity. Now, lithium is expensive. I know a lot of you are gonna say, oh, but it's so expensive, my AGMs are great. And they are, AGMs, lead acid, they are, they are great, but the big difference between lithium and uh, AGMs, lead acid, etc., is the fact, that I mentioned it earlier in the video, you can use a lot more. So out of my mum's 110 amp hour lithium, if she had 110, 110 amp hour lead acid or AGM, she'd only really be able to use 55 of the amp hours. So 55 usable amp hours, that's 50% of the battery. If you keep running it down past 50%, you're gonna kill 
that battery very quickly and it won't last you as long. The lithium, we've got 88 usable amp hours. So what it means is instead of putting two 110s in to get 100 amp hours, we've got 88 out of one small 110 amp hour battery and it's far lighter. So that is the biggest plus. There are a few other things. They're so much more efficient. I think this van and my van charge up so quickly on a short drive or in particular when we're getting so, uh, even a little bit of solar because they're just charged that more efficiently. Now the price, they are more expensive, but you do get a six year warranty warranty with EcoTree you don't get such as long I think they're two or three years on other batteries so a six year warranty and a lot of that is because they can do way more cycles I think they can do something like 3,000 cycles I'll put it on here now uh, there's a massive difference so they're going to last you so much longer so I think personally over time the fact that you're not having to plug in at campsites or you're not having to drive such long distances to recharge them you're going to get that money back so knowing what I know now I would probably if you can afford it I would always recommend going lithium and like I say EcoTree are the only ones we've used they never let us down so I'm quite happy to recommend them I love our batteries they also have a BMS inbuilt so that's a battery management system inbuilt inside of the battery so that keeps you safe so if you do ever get any over voltage under, under voltage it's going to shut itself down so you are completely safe uh, that's ideal and like I say the both of ours have got the Bluetooth in which is a massive plus because it lets you know what percentage you're getting what's coming in etc like that so hopefully this video has given you a good overview of what I think is the perfect electrical system for an off-grid camper. Like I say, our system's pretty much exactly the same, just a bit beefier. This is just a downscaled version of that. From experience, from three years of using it, I know that all the components in here aren't going to foul or are very unlikely to foul. Obviously, I can't guarantee that. I don't think anyone can. But... Um, you would have sit. We would, if our electrical system would have failed, we certainly would have made a video on it. So the fact that you've never seen us have any electrical problems, we've had many problems, <laughs> engine problems, <laughs> all kinds of van life related problems. Our electrical system has been the one thing really that's never ever let us down. So really happy with it, and I think my mum's going to have exactly the same experience in here. Now, like I say, we put ours in. Bluefix put this one in. So there's two different ways of doing it. Everybody's different. I was happy to learn, or I had to learn how to do my own electrics because at the time of doing my van build I couldn't find I tried to find a company that would just do the electrical install to the standard that I wanted it done and I found a few but honestly some of the things they were saying to me on the phone uh, or oh, we'll just put in a battery add an inverter run everything through that I knew at that point that was wrong so there was no or I couldn't find a company at the time that would do just the electrical side of it now, a lot of you have asked, could I recommend one? Now, I thankfully, I can. So Bluefix, like I say, they've done lots of installs. I'll put some photos of some of their previous work up because they do do a very, very, very tidy install and a very, very safe install as well. So it's important that you, I think, for your electrical system, which, let's be honest, if it fails, could be a big problem, is done right. So, yeah, I'll leave uh, a link in the description to uh, Bluefix. I'll leave their socials. I'll leave their website. So, yeah, give them a call. Get in touch. Um, and I'll also leave a link to, if you want to upgrade your batteries or if you're putting new batteries in, I'll leave a leaked link to EcoTree. If you're thinking of going lithium, I'd definitely give them a consider because like I say, we've had no issues whatsoever. And on that note, I think that is enough electrical waffle. Uh, you'll see we've got the diesel heater, like I said, in another video to come and then we're back to travel videos and we're going to be exploring wows and hopefully some more cracking park ups like this one. So I'll see you guys on the next one.